Yay, there it is. So we have Donkey Kong Country as the cover story. And at the top of the page it says Super NES, Genesis, 32X, Sega CD, Neo Geo, Jaguar, 30, or 3DO, Game Gear, Arcade. So many good retro systems in one magazine. How could it possibly be this good? Next page we have an awesome ad for what looks like Sonic and Knuckles. Oh yeah, plug in, lock on, break out. Only Sega's got it. It's funny that, oh, there's more. Yeah, yeah, the lock on cart. You guys remember the lock on cart? The only game too big to fit in a single cartridge. Yeah, because you got to lock on, wait a second. Oh, yeah, you lock on Sonic 2 and Sonic 3. Here is a uh, some a fun fact about Sonic 2 and Sonic and Knuckles. So, the Sonic and Knuckles cart, uh, from what I understand, does not does not like it, when you connect the Sonic 2 cart, it doesn't hack Sonic 2 to add Knuckles or anything like it. There's actually the whole uh, a whole ROM of Sonic 2 in the Sonic and Knuckles cart that only becomes available to play when you lock on a Sonic 2 cart. So you're not actually accessing any data from the original Sonic 2 cart. All that data is in the Sonic and Knuckles cart on a on its own chip. And it's just locked away until you attach a cart to it. Um, save $10 by mail with Lifesavers. Hmm. I'm sure this was an expensive cart at the time. I don't know how much it, it was, but... I wouldn't be surprised if this was a $70 cart with the lock-on technology. Let's read what it says here. Choose to play either Sonic or Knuckles with each his own signature moves in their biggest confrontation ever. And, and there's more. Oh, wait. And here's more breakthrough news is what it says. With revolutionary new lock-on technology, Sonic and Knuckles is the first video game in history that interacts with your other Sonic games. And it's only on Sega Genesis, so plug in, get ready, and break out. The lock-on cart was really cool. It was really cool. Uh, play as Sonic and let loose on Robotnik with amazing new powers. But um, Sonic and Knuckles didn't didn't give Sonic any new powers uh, aside from what was already in Sonic 3, so I don't know what they're trying to say there. Uh, play as Knuckles, Tackle Robotnik, and Metal Sonic with bare-fisted attacks and high-speed glides. Yep, yep, that was a thing. Gear up, hit the mark, and watch this edgy echidna stir up some real trouble. Um, then it says, uh, play Sonic and Knuckles by itself or lock on with other Sonic games, i.e. Sonic 2 and Sonic 3 were the only two games compatible. Lock on Sonic 3... Transform Floating Isle into a huge 34 meg Sonic epic, complete with new characters and multiple surprise endings. I think I found a surprise ending in Sonic and Knuckles because there was some level in Sonic and Knuckles where I just walked off the edge of the screen and then uh, did a boss battle with Metal Sonic and then the game ended. Like I think I found a level skip uh, in the game, but I've never heard anyone ever talk about it. And when I mention it to people... Nobody knows what I'm talking about, so I'm the only person Hi in the world. Everybody. Hi, Princess Aaron. I'm probably the only person in the world who's ever done this level skip in Sonic and Knuckles. Uh, lock on Sonic 2. Now you can play as Knuckles. Hey, Princess Aaron. Hey, Princess Aaron. Now you can play as Knuckles and take advantage of his sneaky signature moves, climb, glide, and play like never before in Sonic 2. As seen on MTV oh, Music yeah. Television. Hey Warzone Master, what's up? We're having some old man time with old game magazines. Uh, I'm doing good, Princess Aaron, thank you. We got Editorial Zone, I don't know if I'll read, I don't know if I'll read this. Can't believe one more issue and it's another year gone by so soon. It will be time to assemble our buyer's guide, give you mega awards, yeah. This must be like an October issue then. 
possibly November, does it say? Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't have a month on the cover. It has an issue number. I don't see a, I don't see a month anywhere. But I think this is, I think this is from 1994 based on the cover. It, mm -hmm. uh, okay, Warzone Master. It does say uh, Arrow 2 New for 94. Arrow 2 New for 94. It's the Batman. I don't know what it's trying to say, but there's King of Fighters 94, so the number 94 appears on the cover multiple times, so this must be a 1994 magazine. What is this? Lodestar The Legend of Thule, available on Sega CD and PC CD-ROM. Lodestar The Legend of Thule Bodine. Never heard of that game. Has anyone ever heard of that? It was on Sega CD. I have a pretty good Sega CD emulator on my Wii, so maybe I'll try that. Shaq Fu! I love Shaq Fu! All right, here's the uh, table of contents. We got Editorial Zone, which we passed up. Most Wanted, which I don't think we're there yet. Hocus Pocus 16, that's not the movie. I think Hocus Pocus is the name of a shooting, like a shoot 'em up style game. <clears throat> oh, 16 is the page that it's on. <laughs> uh, the Adventures of Minotaur, Viewpoint, DHNN Scavenger, Sega Sector, that sounds good. GF Controller Review. Does GF stand for Girlfriend? Planet SNES? Yeah, I want to go to Planet SNES. Game Fan 32. Maybe that's for 32-bit stuff? There was 32-bit uh, stuff when this game came out. In fact, the PlayStation would have just been released when this magazine came out. Hands-on Game Fan Sport. I think we'll skip that section. Border Crunchers. I guess that's Arcade Japan News Network. Other stuff. Postmeister and Wolfinger's Wall. Yeah. Cover by Rare. The cover is very good. Expect the Unexpected, Wolverine, right? For Super Nintendo Sega Genesis, yeah! In the search of the next level, 16-bit is enough. Remember, the PlayStation just came out and was starting to eat Nintendo's lunch. With their 32-bit, with Flashing 32-bit all over their ads. 32-bit, 32-bit, it's the best. But Nintendo came back and said, Hey, here's Donkey Kong Country. 16-bit is enough. And for a lot of people, it was. Nintendo built a new kind of Donkey Kong Country, a game that looks so much better than anything yet available on high-end platforms, PlayStation, uh, that people can't be, you know, people can't believe you play it on the Super NES. Believe it. Uh, at last summer's CES show in Chicago, showgoers insisted that there must be some kind of trick, like they expected to see a guy behind the curtain pulling levers. <laughs> it's so awesome. I mean, it seems like no big deal nowadays, but at the time, Donkey Kong Country was blowing people's minds. Let's see what they're saying in the little blurb here. New hardware not necessary. Don't buy a Sega Saturn. Don't buy a PlayStation. You don't need to. Not, a, not when you just have to put in this cartridge. The thing about Donkey Kong Country is it didn't have any special chips. It did all that it did with just base Super Nintendo hardware. All right, here's what they say. For years, you've been promised the next level of video games. Some companies like 3DO and Atari claim that their game systems are at the next level, like Atari Jaguar. Or the 3DO, perhaps. Uh, Sega has claimed for years that Genesis is the next level. They also have said that the Sega CD and 32X will be the next level, at least until the Saturn comes along. Oh, Saturn hasn't been released at the writing of this article, I suppose. Why don't they... I might be wrong about the PlayStation having, having been released. Why don't they level with you? Because the next level isn't necessarily a matter of high-priced new gear that will be obsolete almost before it leaves the package. Nintendo looked at it an, uh, the other way around. Instead of engineering a new system every six months, why not improve today's games through new software development techniques? 
The result is Donkey Kong Country. The next level of video game sophistication, programming, wizardry, and total fun. Uh, and you can pl plug into your Super NES control deck this fall. No gadgets, no gimmicks. It's a pretty good sales pitch. It's a pretty good sales pitch. I want to keep reading what they say in green here. They keep asking what chip is used. Yeah, that's what I was just saying. There is no chip. The beauty of DK, <clears throat> sorry. The beauty of DK Country is that it doesn't use any special hardware, just awesome programming. And it doesn't need an expensive booster like 32X for the Genesis, because the Super NES already has the basic equipment that can deliver incredible graphics and sound. Burn! Uh, no one thought that it was possible to put fully rendered computer animation on a 16-bit video game, but then Nintendo did it. Now the industry is rushing to catch up to the new standard that Donkey Kong has set. Who wrote this article? It reads like an advertisement. Oh, it is an advertisement. Oh my gosh. Look at the bottom of the page. It says advertisement right there. I thought this was an article brought to you by insiders at Nintendo America. This is an elaborate ad. It's very good though. Because of all the mentions of the competition, they by name mention Sega 32X and Atari and you know, advertisers, advertisers don't usually do that. Um, beyond the hype, let's read this little section with the yellow text. Most game companies thought that the next level of games would use digitized graphics on a CD drive. Yeah, CD-ROM drive. I just ate dinner, so I might burp a couple of times. Excuse me. Sorry. That's the hype behind multimedia systems promising new interactive experiences. But as anyone has, but but anyone who has played those multimedia CD-ROM games can tell you. The experience doesn't live up to the hype. What's wrong with multimedia? CD-ROM is inherently slow. Digitized animation is very limiting because real subjects are expensive to film and limited in what they can do. What's more, even with more than 500 megabytes of memory, you are limited to a frustratingly small amount of video animation. For true game interactivity, you need to take a step beyond digitization to fully rendered computer animations. Uh, the technique Donkey Kong used isn't much different from digitizing, uh, like, video, like digitizing actors. It's technique isn't that different. Um, let's see, where was I? Animations. Uh, what that means is that you can create any character imaginable in three dimensions, and the computer can move it any way you want. Turn it at any angle, place it on the background. Uh, the technique is called advanced computer modeling. And the result is far more lifelike. Uh, game uh, is a far more lifelike, lifelike game experience. That's how Donkey Kong Country was made, and it promises to be the future of video games. Oh man, uh, how much? Okay, all right. I'm just gonna read this little section. That'll be the end of the ad. I'm really curious what else they're gonna say. They even show screenshots of the competing systems. That's crazy. Uh, talking the big numbers, both 3DO and Atari aspired to create the ultimate high-end video game system. Not only did each of the two new systems promise an evolutionary step up to the next level of gaming, the hardware featured some big numbers. Both systems claimed fast processing and enhanced graphics, but raw processing power doesn't make a great game. In fact, the most impressive numbers are the high-end retail price tags of the systems, $250 for the Jag, and a whopping 400 buckaroos for the 3DO. So far, there haven't been many games released. The 3DO was released at actually $700 when it was released. Um, so far, there haven't been many games released for these new systems because the platforms haven't sold well. It seems that the game players aren't convinced the 3DO and Jaguar, Jaguar represent the next level any more than the slow-selling Sega CD. And for 32X's adapter, how many games do you suppose will be made for a tacked on system with a life expectancy of maybe a year? Wow. Wow. Nostradamus was writing this ad. <laughs> it's simple. The Super Nintendo still has the best games in the world and it won't bankrupt you. Sometimes the grass, not to mention 
your wallet is greener where you are right now. <laughs> this is a really well written ad. I like it. Okay, here's the most wanted. So the top 10 most wanted when this mag was released. 1994, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Top 10, Super Street Fighter 2. Oh, top 10 and then most wanted. So top 10s are what's already released. Super Street Fighter 2 SNES. Super Street Fighter 2 Genesis. Super Metroid. Lunar for Sega CD. Hmm, interesting. Virtua Racing for Genesis. NBA Jam for Genesis. Tempest 2000 for Jaguar. Arguably the only good game on the system. Arguably. Stunt Race FX and Secret of Mana. Most wanted at this time was Alien vs. Predator for Jaguar. Final Fantasy 3. I guess that game hadn't been released yet. When did Final Fantasy 3 come out? 95? Uh, oh right, the PlayStation released in 95. So this is a year before the PlayStation and Saturn released. Donkey Kong Country, Samurai Showdown, any system. Mega Man X, Rayman for Jaguar. Yeah, that was good. Uh, Kasumi Ninja, Killer Instinct for Ultra 64. So they, were, they knew of the Ultra 64 when this magazine was written. This is very early for mentions of the Ultra 64. Interesting. I wonder if there's more Ultra 64 rumors in here. Got a, an ad for Michael Andretti's IndyCar Challenge. With some good uh, SNES box art there. What is this? Contains none of the U.S. recommended daily allowance of vitamins and minerals. Oh, for Gex? <laughs> cool. Yep, that was an okay game on 3DO. Hocus Pocus. Oh, Hocus Pocus is a collection of articles. Travel with thy controller in hand to a land where cheaters prosper. Oh, is this like the cheats section? Oh, it is. There's cheats. Hmm. Oh, okay. Stage select. Right. Teams had cheats back then. That's a thing. Uh, I'll start the game at um, 6 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, so in about uh, 6 minutes. Hey, Warzone Master, welcome back. Oh, here's some Sonic 3 cheats. Mortal Kombat cheats. Those are the best kind of cheats. One button fatalities are the best, aren't they? Uh, what else we got? I want to see like upcoming rumors, stuff like that. More cheats, more cheats. Ooh, here's a 32x ad. Awesome. I always wanted a 32x. I wouldn't mind having one. I should find out how much those go for. It would be cool to have a 32x and a Sega CD. But Sega CDs hardly any of hardly any of them work anymore. Uh, here's a 3DO game ad. So 3DO was still like being pushed big time in 94. Like 3DO was like maybe going to succeed, maybe. <laughs> Some kind of comic book. Shining Force. Shining Force 2 for Sega Genesis. Donkey Kong Country ad. Love Donkey Kong Country. Looks like some reviews here. We got a review for Sonic and Knuckles. Oh, what'd they say about Sonic and Knuckles? Let's read a few of these. Uh, my girlfriend was getting bullied, so I was standing up for her. Oh, good job. It's good to stand up for people who are getting bullied. Well done. Here's what they say about Sonic uh, and Knuckles, a game that I liked as a kid, which I really would like to own. While playing Sonic 2 and 3 again, uh, wasn't something I was dying to do. They were both enhanced greatly by Knuckles, especially 3, which is like a whole new game. Sonic and Knuckles itself is a great new adventure, but offers little new in the series. It's more like an extension of Sonic 3 than anything else. I feel like I've been here too many times. What I really like about Sonic and Knuckles is lock on. You get a lot for your money. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I get it. Um... Next person says, isn't Sega cool? Not only do you get a completely new Sonic adventure, uh, but not, not that Sonic adventure, but um, additional levels and the option to play as Knuckles in Sonic 2 and 3 for a mere $59.99. Oh, $59.99, okay. This type of backwards compatibility 
has been the norm in computer game world for a while. Hopefully it'll catch on with video games too. Uh, imagine backwards compatible fantasy, fantasy star cart or something. Yeah. You hate the 18 plus. Um, okay. I'm, eight, I'm 18 plus. What are you saying? Exactly. Uh, here's the last review for Sonic and Knuckles with the 95. It's the highest one. It says, uh, not only do I think Sonic and Knuckles Sonic 4 is the best game of the series, but you add two more games, both uh, rejuvenated with Knuckles and the possibilities when all the emeralds are collected. This is one huge game with at, uh, at oh, oh, this is a huge game that will last even the most seasoned gamer weeks on end. Lock on, Sega! <laughs> um... Let's see, there's also reviews for Mickey Mania, which got good reviews. Arrow 2, which got good reviews. Booger Man, which surprisingly got good reviews. Like, I always thought that was kind of a middle of the road type game. On Twitch, how they are 18 plus. Uh, um, oh, okay. Well, my stream, I don't think my stream is 18 plus. Everyone's welcome in my stream. Uh, there's a review for Echo 2, which got lower scores than everyone else. Wow, they gave a hundred. They gave perfect scores. Everybody gave a perfect score. Oh, there's a thing scanned in here in the way. But perfect scores for Donkey Kong Country. Yeah, can't say I disagree with that. Let's see what they say about Donkey Kong Country. And then I guess we'll go to the game. <clears throat> Donkey Kong Country. Hey, thanks for the Power Star. Thank you very much. Although I'm not in any particular need for invincibility at the moment, I appreciate the Power Star. So here's what they say about Donkey Kong Country. Absolute 16-bit perfection. It just does not get any better. CGI graphics that make you gasp for errors. Scrolls out the yin-yang play mechanics galore. Hidden stuff up the wazoo. Music to die for. Donkey Kong Country... Chuckles at the Jag and the 3DO as it flies by untouched. The SNES must be a 32-bit in disguise. <laughs> yeah. Um, so good that Sugiro Miyamoto was jealous of this game. Very jealous. Uh, when you see Donkey Kong Country in motion for the first time, you'll do what I did. Turn into a blabbering, drooling idiot. This is the most amazing 16-bit game yet, and that's a fact. Simply everything about Donkey Kong Country is Kick butt rocking uh, magnificent. You'd swear it was a 32 bit. It's uh, if you possess an SNES, you have no excuse not to buy this game now. I agree. Oh, well, eh, I don't want to stand up to go get it. I was going to throw, throw the cartridge in front of the camera, but whatever. One through 10, pick a number. I pick 10. 10 is my number. Uh, last review for Donkey Kong Country. Where have these graphics been hiding? I'm still in shock after seeing this game. I can't believe it. It even plays perfectly. The SNES is dry on platformers and then all of a sudden, ka-chunk! This is definitely my game of the year. Atari and 3DO must be shaking in their boots. Yeah. Uh, looks like they also... They also review Arrow 2. They review Clay Fighter 2. They review The Lion King. I'd like to read review of. Demon's Crest, Alien vs. Predator. Here's a good uh, ad for Clay Fighter 2. I win because I picked 10. Thank you. Yeah, these are good, good ads. Clay Fighter 2. Oh, Echo the Dolphin. Nice. So Dreamcast. Oh no, Echo the Dolphin was a Genesis game, of course. <clears throat> the Saturn wasn't even out when this magazine was published. Here's some Sonic and Knuckles stuff. Alright, okay, I think that's enough. I think we'll get get on with some gameplay. 